Welcome to the program. My name is Jesse Peterson. For those, just, for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, I want to tell you to call your neighbors and call your friends. We're going to have a very interesting conversation today about forgiveness, Bill Clinton, should we forgive, uh, what is forgiveness, a whole dialogue about that issue so you don't want to miss it. Today my guest is Miriam Sunday from the Los Angeles Radical Women. That's a very interesting title. Thank you for coming on. Well, thank you for having the show. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, Miriam, you also running for state, state senate this yes, year? Yes, I am. And what made you decide to run? Because I don't think, well, I'm running for state senate in District 22, which is this district, right? Um, Eagle Rock, Koreatown, Hollywood, a little bit of South Central, East LA, downtown. And um, as a feminist, um, which the name of our organization pretty yeah. much explains, <laughs> And as a socialist, um, we don't think that the uh, regular parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, offer people much of a choice. And they, the voters certainly seem to agree with us since very less and less of them ever go to the polls. Okay. And so we run campaigns to offer a choice. We're clearly different from the opposition. Our platform calls for things the Democrats and Republicans would never call for. Um, like asking businesses to actually pay their taxes to fund public education. Mm. Um, and so that's why I'm running. It's very educational. It's very exciting. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> We're going door to door in the whole area and getting... Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Radical women. Mm -hmm. When I hear that title, it made me want to run. <laughs> <laughs> why such a title? Well, we want to convey the idea that what women need um, for our lives is a radical change in the system. Radical is a very respectable word meaning go to the root of the question and that's that's actually what the term radical comes from and we feel that women uh, women we fight for the complete liberation of women the complete equality of women socially economically politically personally and we don't think this system can offer that really? and so we educate people that there needs to be a change in the system we're socialists we think capitalism is the problem we're also very active. I mean, we're on picket lines. We write letters to the editor. We run for office. We, we walk our talk. Okay. Are you a national organization or just local? Yes, we're an international organization. Oh, really? And this is the Los Angeles branch. Wow. Um, Bill Clinton. Mm. Should he resign? You're asking if he should resign over the Monica Lewinsky, et cetera, matter. Yes. And the answer to that is we don't think so. We don't, don't think so. he should be impeached uh, for that because we consider what's been on the headlines for the last, what is it, 10 months, 8 to 10 months, is what was finally put on the front page of the LA Times char correctly characterized as a sexual McCarthyism, as feminists. It's usually us, it's usually women that are victimized by the moralistic fervor that's, that's um, being on the headlines and on the news everywhere around the country, which we think um, is a quite inexcusable witch hunt into private behavior. Really? Does it matter to radical women that uh, Bill Clinton, the president of the United States of America, mm -hmm. 50 years old or older, has sex with a, a young girl, married, we consider that an issue between consenting adults. Really? We really do. Now, if you want to talk about what we really think morality is, we'd be glad, I'd be glad to do that yeah, because we, we have strong opinions on that subject. Did you guys feel the same way about the Clarence Thomas, Anita Hill incident? No, we do think there's a difference between um, con sex between consenting adults and sexual harassment on the job, which so is a method designed to discriminate primarily against women, but also happens to men. But, but harassing someone sexually on the job is illegal conduct and probably should be um, uh, fought much harder than it is and stems from sex discrimination, which is the method of, of denying women the same opportunities men have and basing it on a principle that supposedly women are less qualified and not deserving of the same respect, which makes sexual harassment f following from that. But right? the sexual harassment laws uh, clearly define that if an authority figure uh, should have sex with someone that is working in the same company, same office where he or she is the boss, uh, they are taking advantage of this young person due to, or person mm -hmm. due to power of authority. 
And don't you, you don't see that in this incident with Bill I don't, Clinton? I don't see that. We don't, it, it, to us, it looks very much, and it seems to me that that's what the U.S. public keeps telling the pollsters. This is a private issue between consenting adults. And I do think it's very different from, from what happens on the job to working women who don't have the resources that even a Monica Lewinsky has to, if, if it were sexual harassment in her case, I think at some point someone would have said it. But it doesn't had, look like that to us. Had Bill Clinton been a Republican conservative president, would you feel the same way? Uh, oh, yeah. And partly because as a socialist, we're in the enviable position of never having supported Bill Clinton for office. So I'm not defending oh, somebody yeah. that we ever helped elect. We think he's part of the problem for women in this country, but that we also don't want to jump in and cash in on what we consider a moralistic witch hunt. I, I noticed that, um, let me ask this first, what, what is it that you guys, do you believe in abortion, the right to have an abortion? Absolutely, we uh, think a woman's, woman's body is her own property, it's not the property of the state, the property of a husband, a lover, or any member of her family, it's hers to do with what she chooses. Do you believe that homosexuals should have the right to uh, live as, or the same benefits, or whatever it is that they want that straight people have? Yes, absolutely. We, our organization's founders actually wrote landmark legislation in the city of Seattle. We're part of the writing team that wrote the first legislation that guaranteed um, pr protection on the job to um, people which were called sexual minorities at the time. But, and we have fought to maintain that language in the city of Seattle under many repeal attempts. Yes, we feel very strongly about and that. And do you believe in affirmative action and social program for the quote-unquote underclass or? We believe or, in, and once well, again, we, we were involved in the fights to get affirmative action in the first place and we fought very hard to keep it. So, I myself have a trades job. I'm a, I'm a beneficiary. Right. of the affirmative action laws that were finally passed in the 60s and the rules that were written to enforce them in the 70s. So unless I'm missing it, what is the difference between you and Bill Clinton then? I mean, why wouldn't you support a man like that? He stands for all of those things. I think that um, his support for those things is something of an illusion. I think, for example, on affirmative action, which is the most recent clear memory in my mind, yeah. uh, Affirmative action was won by a broad, politically independent of movement begun by blacks but kicking, kicked off into other movements, yes. demanding full equality on the job. And what Clinton, when it was under attack, and it still is, but the attack in California that came on the ballot is 209, to make it illegal to have affirmative action, um, Clinton's response wasn't to openly defend it, but came up with a slogan called Mend It, Don't End It, <laughs> as though it were a problem. Affirmative action has been weakened systematically for 20 years. There's almost nothing left of it. Um, and so this coup de grace that gets on the ballot in California brings forth Mend It, Don't End It. That's no defense. Do you That's think, no defense at all. Do you of, think that uh, blacks made a mistake by allowing the homosexual group and women groups and now the Hispanics and everyone to jump on board with affirmative action? Or should they have fought to say, no, this is to bring blacks up, and once they get up to a certain level, we've got to let it go? Did they make a mistake? No, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, first of all, nobody by themselves is going to win much under this system. When you have a system that makes profit out of underpaid labor of Latinos and blacks and women, and the sex role segregation, et cetera, you're not going to win much rights uh, fighting along the lines of your little corner of the population. And since we've all been discriminated against by the same system, it only makes sense to me to join hands makes us a lot more powerful. But it's it also ethically right. Why is a f woman, for example, in the feminist movement, we're the radicals, we're the radicals where we go. Um, and a lot of people uh, characterize the feminist movement as just for white women, for example. But in fact, we have always, as socialist feminists, raised issues. First of all, the most discriminated against women in the country are women of color. And so we have always fought for civil rights for people of all colors as well as for women because they're naturally connected. But the, the, the people who have... Um, uh, 
gain from affirmative action are white homosexual females for the most part. Blacks have not really gained too much from affirmative action. It seems as though those people who came in to help are the ones that got the most benefits from it as opposed to the people who it was really for, intended for. Actually, I don't think that's true. I know that's the argument but, yeah, I listen to. Yeah, but it is true. But I, I work myself in an affirmative action job in the trades, yeah. and I've worked in that job since 1974. And so when I went in, I was, there were like none of us. There were some black males on the job, and we were very clear, we understood very well that they did break the ice. We were very appreciative of that. Um, when I came down here and began to work in the job here, there's a hundred people in the garage I work out of. There are three women. So, and most of the people in the garage are, there's a, every race under the sun there. So I don't think it's fair to say that. Can you hold that thought? Yeah, I'm sorry sure. to cut you off. Uh, we need to take a break and we'll be back in a moment. Okay. Jesse Peterson is the founder of the Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. For information, write Post Office Box 86253, Los Angeles, California 90086, or call 1-800-411-BOND. Welcome back to the program. My name is Jesse Peterson. If you're just tuning in, my guest today is Miriam Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. from mm -hmm. the Radical Women's Organization right. here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, Miriam, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton broke the law, lying under oath. Mm -hmm. um, he lied to the American people. Uh, he lied to his wife. He lied to his daughter. Uh, he is a poor example of a man. Uh, well, he's not a man. A man would never do the things he's done. Do you support breaking the law? I think that depends on what law you're talking about. But if in this case you're talking about, you're seriously proposing that someone lies about his sex life, then I do not consider that an impeachable offense. I really don't. I do, I do consider Clinton and the Democrats to have committed some pretty egregious acts against women in this country, like passing the welfare bill um, is the top on my mind and throwing people in the streets as a result of that. But having sex and lying about it, regardless of who you're lying to about it or in what format or in front of what judge, um, I really think that I and the majority of the people in the country who keep telling the media we really don't care about that. Let's get back to business. Yeah. Well, you know what I notice is most of the American people mm -hmm. uh, are not supporting Bill Clinton. They do want him to resign. But what we have is that 95% of black people are supporting him, which is a shame. And so if you took away most of those 95% of black people, then his, his uh, uh, the in favoritism would be less than 50%. Mm -hmm. So it's really not most of the American people, it's just the black people who would who are holding up the polls in that manner. Uh, so are you telling me that if I were to go and, and have sex with one of my female employees and they said it was okay, and then uh, somehow or another it came out, you know, I was married and it came out, and I could go into courts and lie about it and it would be all right. Well, I mean, I shouldn't, not that you're saying it's okay, but I shouldn't be fired from my job or I shouldn't have to pay a price for that. I think if you coerced it, I think if a condition of promotion or keeping that job or additional training or access to a better job um, was contingent upon your being able to have sex with an employee, yes, that should be illegal behavior. But as I've said, I think consenting adults are consenting adults. And I think the other thing about it is that what's happening in this case is although it's focused on Bill Clinton, who's the president, and normally people in that powerful a position don't pay these kind of prices for th under these kind of conditions. The majority of people who constantly pay the price for this kind of morality, whether or not it's because we can't afford children and can't get abortions or can't get a job because we have children and we aren't married, are women. We're the ones who get moralized about 
all the time. So we don't have much stake in going after somebody, even if we don't like him, because of private behavior. And because the whole impetus to snooping in people's bedrooms, which was one of the things that the women's movement was about, was to keep the government out of our bedrooms. Well, you know, we didn't um, really snoop into his bedroom. He has that with a younger or immature mm -hmm. who there is no way she's going to keep this a secret. She's the one that told someone else about it, who told someone else about it, sure. and it got out. Don't you think he should have thought about all that before doing that? Personally, I'm sure that, I mean, we're talking now about whether either of them evidenced good judgment, et cetera, and I can't comment, ex I mean, I don't know. I don't know what went through these people's minds when they do that sort of thing, but I, uh, bedroom is a metaphor, I mean, obviously for something larger. Right. Snooping into personal behavior is, it doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't, really? I mean. Let me ask this, um, what do you think should happen to him? Should he be punished at all? I think what should, what I would really like to see now that the investigative uh, cameras are all ready and the tape recorders are set up and, you know, is I would really like an investigation of this administration's policies. Their public policies that they spend our tax dollars on. I mean, why is it that, that this administration was able to bomb two sovereign nations without um, consulting Congress or the U.S. public? Why was it that Let welfare me. was eliminated? Why, who, who's being consulted on these things? Why are they planning to privatize Social Security? Um, that's the sort of, but I don't think him, I don't think that he should be, quote, punished, unquote, because of his personal behavior. Should he be punished for any reason? Well, him and... How about breaking the law? Should he be punished for that? Because it's clear case, that he no. lied on the oath. No, I don't, no. I, I don't, like I said, I, mostly well, what I hear, I just want to, this as an aside, most of what I've heard at work and from other people, friends who, who've listened to their coworkers is, look, this guy didn't do anything that I or someone I know I hear that hasn't done. And quite frankly, I think people's necessarily, their sex lives has frequently got very little to do with how well or badly they do the job they're supposed to be doing, so, quite frankly. Do you think he should be punished at all? Not for anything related to this, no. Not for lying on the old, mm -mm. not for lying to the American people. Mm -mm. And so, and well, case, lying to the American people. Now, I think he's lied to the American people about a lot of other things. Right, but about mm -hmm. this whole mm -hmm. isn't it? No. Mm -hmm. And so, the people who have gone to jail uh, for lying on the oath for sexual reasons should be let out then. Yeah, probably, unless of course they were abusing their position of authority. I mean, rape. I mean, rape is different. For example, uh, yeah. somebody who rapes me and lies about it. That's different from somebody who has consenting relations with Let's someone. talk about more issues for a minute. Okay. I've noticed that uh, most of the people who say, it's okay, mm -hmm. he's not doing anything that anyone else has, haven't done or mm -hmm. I haven't done, I say that those type of people are immoral people and uh, because you can't have a high standard of living and support something like that. So we have a group of people saying those type of things, and I'm embarrassed that most black people are saying, oh, it's okay, you know, everybody does it, right? And I know that they are saying it because most black people are immoral and un-American anyway. You can see it in, in the lack of family, in the community, every perverted thing you can think of is going on. So I'm not surprised at them. What do you say about people who say it's okay, everybody does it? Um. Well, I'd like to register, just for the record, I, I completely disagree with your comments about the black community to start with. Oh, why? why I mean, I don't know, I, I've not talked to everybody in the black community about Bill Clinton, but it's very, um, I don't know if you're just trying to get well, a response 90, or not to, to say. 98%, to 95% of blacks say, yeah, it's fine, everybody well, does it. No, so. what I'm talking about was your comments backing that up by saying that perversion, immorality, all of that stuff is rampant in the black community. I find my own experience is that the black movement, which was based in the black community, transformed relations in this country so we can all live at a higher level of equality and getting and broke, breaking down segregation. Having said that, because I, I know that's not your question, I just want to go on record as saying that, and I, I'm kind of tired of what usually comes from politicians going on and on and on about immorality and illegitimacy and targeting black and Latino communities for that. But that, 
What I, in response to your other question, though, I think the it's all right, everybody does it, is once again depends on what it is you're talking about. I don't think it's okay to ignore Nazis. I don't think it's okay to ignore wife beaters. Um, and the fact that if, you, if someone were to say that's okay to beat your wife because everybody does it, I don't think that's okay. But private, non-hurtful, consenting behavior to me, there is no right, there's no reason to have a law against it. There's no reason to stick a microphone and a camera under somebody's bed or at their window to try to find it. It is unconstitutional and intrusive. And I don't care if it happens to a 13-year-old girl or the President of the United States. The pr problem is it more often happens to young women than it does the President of the United States. Um, do you think that a, a moral person Mm -hmm. Can you define morality when you think of that? What, what, what goes through your mind? Well, morality... Oh, in, let me ask this first. I'm yeah. sorry. Are you a moral person? I try very hard to be a moral person. And, and what does that mean to you, to be a moral person? Well, what I try, first person? of all, I try to do what's right. I try not to hurt people. I try to, do the, to fight for what are the right things, which means to me equality among people and not uh, disparate treatment. The, those are the... Uh, putting it simply. Um, I think it's important to, that people commit themselves to fighting for something as opposed to fighting against everything. Um, we fight and think it's the moral fight to try to make sure that people's lives are better, that we enrich people's lives as opposed to make people's lives worse. Or sitting, watching, and letting, watching the train go by, you know that expression, just watching the world go by. Um, what we don't, what I don't think is morality that means much to me is what what people do with their private lives like I said how they dress whether they wear makeup or not who they sleep with who they don't sleep with um, so you don't think what family situation they live in are not moral questions to me really so you don't think that having sex out of wedlock having babies out of wedlock uh, um, lying and and adultery, all this stuff that's going on, you don't think that's immoral? No, I mean, I want to separate lying out from that because I don't think, I think lying, once again, it depends on what you're talking about. Adultery, to me, is a moral term that comes out of a morality I don't support. That uh, it's between the two people. If people are married and made a commitment to each other and one of them breaks it, then the fight they've got is with each other, not with the law. Let me ask, do, do, do you believe in God? No, I don't. I'm an atheist. Oh, okay. So then that would explain why you think that way. Well, I, I don't know. It, it, I, I, I am, like I said, I'm a socialist. And most of us who are socialists are atheists. Yes. We're materialists. We, we think uh, organized uh, Christian religion in particular is a lot to answer for in its treatment of the most oppressed in this country. And, and we're scientific. Um, socialists, but I don't know. It, but I guess it does. It our moral beliefs do stem from that. Yeah. What caused you personally not to believe in God? Um. I well, there's two two things. On the one hand, there's no evidence to me of God, of a, of a monotheistic supreme being who creates and moves the world. On the other hand, I think that science without a political label on it, but <laughs> science itself has given us most of the evidence we need that the world, that what matters um, in the world is matter itself, the material world we live around and the actions we take on it. And what we believe is, uh, as, as Marxists, that uh, systems move and develop from the bottom up. The economy determines the majority of how people live, where they live, what conditions they live in, and what institutions, including religions, grow out of that. Let me ask this, because we're running out of time here, mm -hmm. and this may be personal, and I'd love to you to answer it. Uh, I've noticed that most people who uh, are not believers in God, that uh -huh. God created them, they seem to be unhappy people. You know, on the outside, they, you know, outside they look happy, but within themselves, they're kind of empty, and they're trying to fulfill this emptiness with outer things. 
Uh, are you experiencing that at all? Um, actually, no, I'm not. I'm surrounded by people in the movement who who are genuine, genuinely happy people, although that's not to say that we aren't angry. I mean, it's hard to be a political activist and not be angry at the situation around you. Right. On the other hand, I mean, but do don't take this personally, but my observation of a lot of people that recently, anyway, have, have found an answer in their lives in um, fundamentalist religion have frequently come from an ha unhappy yeah, place. I understand that. Yeah. Do you feel fulfilled within yourself, within your soul, or is there an emptiness there? I feel pretty fulfilled. You I don't do. know if it's with my soul or not, but I feel oh, okay. pretty fulfilled. You know, we're, we're running out of time. Okay. I, I just want to say to the audience that if they would like to get in touch with the radical women, uh, I guess of Los Angeles, Yes, right? Los Angeles. Right? They can right. call my office at an 800 number and we would happily give out the uh, phone number for this mm -hmm. organization. So just feel free to call us. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything you want to add before we leave this particular program? Because we're going to do two segments on this. Oh, Is there okay. something that you want to add before we end? Um, just that I think that it's important to look deeper than the, than the sex scandal into the behavior of the government. Um, because that's where we find whether or not we think people have behaved in a real moral manner. Okay. It's treatment of its own people. And then we'll talk about more of that later. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that in, in part two. I really do appreciate you coming on. Okay. And uh, your honesty uh, mm -hmm. about the way you feel about things is mm -hmm. real interesting to hear. Okay. <laughs> you know? that's tactfully put. <laughs> 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 They're interested to hear the thing. In the next segment, I want to talk about radical women and their relationship with men. Okay. You know, do they hate men? Uh, uh, what do they think about men? I appreciate you tuning in, and I'll see you next week. Okay. I thank you for coming. Thank you. Welcome to the program. My name is Jesse Peterson. I appreciate you tuning in. Tonight, my guest is Marianne Sundy. She's from the LA Radical Women Organization. I appreciate you coming again, staying overnight. Oh, well, thank you for <laughs> this inviting This is a part me. two, so I appreciate it. Um, tell us about the Radical Women Organization. Okay. Uh, Radical Women is an international socialist feminist organization. We were founded in the late 60s. Um, as part of the general upsurge in the feminist movement growing out of the civil rights movement and the anti-war movement. We believe um, as socialists that the system cannot answer the needs that women have. It, it can't do what the capitalist system makes money off of the poverty we're mostly in. And as feminists we fight for the full and complete equality of women and we train women to be leaders. That's part of the reason we're a women's organization, is we believe women are going to have to lead the fight for liberation, and so there's no better place to learn how to do it than in Radical Women. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you also run for office this year. Yes, I'm running as a candidate for state senate on the Peace and Freedom Party ticket um, in District 22, which is right in the heart of L.A., downtown Boyle Heights, Koreatown, a little bit of Eagle Rock, a little bit of Hollywood, a little bit of this and that, okay. Pico Union. Etc. How are you different from the National Organization of Women? Um, are you different? Oh, we are very different. We are the same in that we both believe in the equality of women. Um, we, however, are radicals, and we put our priority um, where we feel there is the most need, and the most need is women on the bottom. Uh, and women on the bottom are working women, immigrant women, women of color poor women, welfare recipients, lesbians and gays, the people who get the short end of the stick of the system. And we feel that anything we are involved in addresses the needs of the people at the bottom first. That's different from a lot of the feminist groups who see fe feminism as just a question of women getting into corporate offices or having a few legal rights, which I think we support those things. We don't think those are bad things, but right. we don't think they go anywhere near far enough, and that if the needs of the women at the bottom are addressed, then everybody's needs are going to be addressed. It's not like people at the top are going to get overlooked. <laughs> when you say you want women to be leaders, mm -hmm. what do you mean by that? Everything from knowing how to speak in public to writing a letter to the editor 
but to be able to, to recognize how our participation in movements is crucial to the success of the movement. If women are on the bottom everywhere, then they're on the bottom at work, they're on the bottom in the black community, they're on the bottom just everywhere. And we're going to have to be the people who articulate that okay. and who lead, just like in the civil rights movement, women were the leaders of, the, not, often free, not often given credit, they weren't always the credited leaders, but you, were the leaders. Do you believe that women should be the leaders of their families, of a family, or that's the man role? I think those roles are determined by the people in them, but primarily we think families should be equalitarian. Really? That women and men um, should share responsibilities. Um, and we also don't believe, we don't support the con concept of a constrictive nuclear family which, where the woman is isolated. There's a guy at the top, the woman is the, he's her boss, and oh, then okay. she gets to boss the kids. This is a system we think, we think it, this is a structure that actually oppresses women and that we're much more supportive of the more collective and f family where, the extended families, for You know example. what I've noticed is that whenever women take over, become quote unquote leaders, it always seemed to lead to destruction. Uh, I've noticed that within the black community, for example, uh, the last 40 years, uh, the black woman has been quote unquote, the head of the family, the decision maker in the community. And 40 years, we now have a state of destruction, you know, total destruction. I noticed that as women began to take over office, not all, there are some nice conservative kind of women out there, right? But I noticed that as- Oh yeah, they're there. They're very much there. Yeah, but I noticed that for the most part, as women take over leadership and, and political office, that they tend to accept everything. It's okay to be a homosexual, it's okay to be a liar, it's okay, you know, if you have sex out of wedlock, feel sorry for everybody because women seem to operate from their emotion and they are more likely to accept the abnormal. And as a result, uh, things seem to fall apart. Have you noticed that? I'm looking at well, things about Barbara all, Boston, for example. For example, you know, I, it's hard for me to, to see many examples of women really having, being in charge of anything in this system, but... Let me, Maxine let, Waters, let's let use me, Maxine Waters, you know her, right? I know of Maxine Waters. And Maxine Waters has been in office for nearly 20 years or so, I guess. Mm -hmm. And South Central Los Angeles, I, I, I guarantee you, you wouldn't go there. I wouldn't go there. So I know you wouldn't. And she's been, quote unquote, over that uh, area for a long time and is worse today than ever before in history. Well, I don't quite know where to start on this one, but just to disabuse you, I mean, I go to Los, South Central Los Angeles all the time. I work sometimes in South Central Los Angeles. We organize in South Central Los Angeles. Our branch has been very active in the Coalition Against Police Abuse, for example, which is headquartered in South Central Los Angeles. So none of us are afraid to go there and we all have friends and political contacts, and like I say, I drive a phone truck around sometimes down there. But I think um, you do sound like you are an advocate of the Moynihan Report, which you're probably familiar with. You're, I heard you're of the him, same generation I am, maybe a little younger. And his report, and he represents the power structure, uh, um, a rich white guy who wrote a report blaming the problems caused by racism and poverty in the black community on black women, single parents, he tried to, he made the claim that the reason that the black community was in the throes of such horrible poverty and there was so much illiteracy and, and crime was because uh, of single parents and it's all our fault. And do you disagree with that? Oh, I certainly do. Really? I mean, I actually think historically in this country, um, black women in particular were leaders against slavery. They held the extended black family together under tremendous pressure um, from the slaveocracy, and it has been black women throughout history who have led the movements of which both of us are beneficiaries. Neither of us would be on television if it hadn't been Let for the civil rights movement. Let me say something about that issue. About, <laughs> let me just say something about the and, black and, women holding it together. Mm -hmm. That's not true. That is a, a, a lie that has been made up by black women in order to lift themselves up and, and really weaken black men even more so. Yes, black women in the past, you know, especially during the civil, post-civil rights movement, had to deal with some horrifying situation. But they did, they had their men around, you know, men were there to help them do it. But that's not the situation today. It is because of the weakness of black men and this anger that is in black women 
that the uh, black community is so screwed up? Actually, I think the black community is in the situation it is because of the system that we live under, which is called capitalism. And I don't know sometimes when, when we're doing these interviews whether you're, you're saying some of the things you are to see if you get a reaction or, or whether them? you really believe them, or it's a little combi combination. No, 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 but, I 100 percent see them. But I find them. them particularly obnoxious to sit here and attack half of the population of a community that's already under attack from the government. The reason the black community is in the condition that it is now has to do with racism, poverty, no jobs, police brutality, lousy schools. Black women didn't do any of that. Black women don't make the national budget. Black women do not run the police department. Black women do not run the school district. Let me ask this. Black women do you forced think that without resources, financial or otherwise, to raise families without any help Let me ask, are you trying think that pretty hard if you ask me. Because of time, do you think that if the black men were strong, that the government, uh, as you say, the police brutality and all of those things, do you think they were, that would be happening if the black men were strong and they were there to guide their wives and their children, protect and, and serve? Well, I'm not do you think the person, we would have those situations yeah. then? I'm not it, the person who said that I thought black men were weak in the first place. Uh, do you think I, don't, I don't think they particularly are. I think that... You I think th they're strong? Lots of them, yeah. I don't Give me an example of a strong black man that you know. A strong black man. I work with strong black men. I, there, are, there are black men who strong? are there are black men who are political leaders who I don't agree with. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't agree with Jesse Jackson on most things, but right. he's a strong male image and a strong leader. He's a Democrat. I'm a socialist. We can argue about that. And how is Jesse Jackson a but strong? But I think that uh, when you say he's a strong leader, well, give me an example of his strength. He's articulate. He has an agenda. He promotes. He's he's concrete about it. Um, and like I said, that's said in the context that I, that I don't agree with him. I think Michael Zinzin, who's a founder of the Coalition of, Against Police Abuse in this city, is a strong black man really? who has fought police abuse in the city for 25 years. Let's go back to I, the women that are leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to take a break. Okay. So when we come back, I want to talk about the women that are leaders and the destruction that comes from them. But see, I don't have any, I don't, there, I don't think there is any destruction from women leaders. Okay. We'll talk about it in a you moment. You can propose, you can ask me if I agree that I'll it is. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Thank you. Jesse Peterson is the founder of the Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. For information, write Post Office Box 86253, Los Angeles, California 90086, or call 1-800-411-BOND. Okay, welcome back to the program. My name is Jesse Peterson. If you're just tuning in, my guest today is Marian Sunday mm -hmm. from the LA Radical Women Organization. And if you want more information about this organization, feel free to call my 800 number and we will give you the phone number, the information about the organization. Uh, Marian, mm -hmm. women that are leaders, I've seen over the last 40 years or so, women being the leaders of the black community and uh, we're, we're in a mess. I've seen uh, many women go into politics mm -hmm. and the country at large is in a mess, mainly because women are emotional, not all, but most are emotional, and they seem to accept the abnormal as being normal. Uh, I, I cited uh, Maxine Water, Barbara Brosser, uh, many others. Mm -hmm. uh, and you seem to disagree with that. Well, I don't, Maxine Waters, Barbara Boxer, Jackie Goldberg are women leaders, but they are the wrong kind of leaders we need, uh -huh. just as are Mark Ridley Thomas, Mayor Reardon, well, Nate I agree Holden. To that. I agree to the all. The fact that. is, what they are is either Democrats or Republicans representing a system that oppresses women, the black community, immigrants, Asians, you name it. And so, Individually, I don't really think that a person's sex is what determines whether they're a good leader or not. It's the ideas they fight for. It's the program they stand for. And if you stand for this system, you're not going to do much good in a community that's victimized by the system. Do you but I know lots of people in the, in the radical movement of all colors who are great leaders, 
who have, who have great principles and who stand up for their ideas and don't back down when offered a bribe. Can you <laughs> name one leader of great principle? In this city? I mean, yeah. you mean someone yeah. who gets on TV a lot or in just people? City. In this city. People, like in, I in said city, in, yeah. right before the break, I think Michael Zinzin, if, since we're talking about the black community, is an example of that. And Michael, is he the, the uh, police, ex-police officer? No. He's I a, don't really know who he is. He is the head of an organization called the Coalition Against Police Abuse. And I give you his name because you were so insistent that there weren't any decent black leaders around. But um, the some, movement but... itself, I mean... Um, the the one of my compañeras Yolanda Alaniz is a leader. As a Chicana who is who has written about the the Chicano movement for years and years, lives down here, helped organize a mass demonstration at City Hall to oppose Initiative 209. Yeah, let me um, ask you this: uh, because of time, I'm I'm going to right. move a little fast. Okay. So you believe that the problems in the black community is due to racism? and not uh, the breakdown of the family. That's true. Not I do. having the father I there, do. the guy. Really? It's racism, so then poverty, how, and that is promulgated by the capitalist system. How do you explain system. then that we were better off before the civil rights movement, except for the laws being against us, but we were better off as black Americans then than we are today? We had uh, families, we had schools, we provided for one another, they went to college. We were better off then than we are today, and the laws were against us, openly against us. How would you explain that situation? I actually don't think that the black community was better off. No, we than, were. I, but I, I, I do know, in general, socially and economically, it is worse for everybody at the bottom than it was 20 years ago because the economy has gotten so much worse. But when I was coming up, black people couldn't even work at the telephone company. They couldn't go to most of the schools outside the neighborhood I lived in, which was in the black community when I but was But as you up. notice, though, they but had a the, high standard of, of, they, of living. They had like a love of, of God, love of country. You know, the family was together. Yes, yeah, some of the laws that needed to change needed to change, but yet blacks live at a higher, they didn't have leaders. There were no such thing as a Maxine Waters or a Jesse Jackson or NAACP and other trying to lead us as though they know what's better for us because they led themselves, you know, they, they went by what was right within themselves. Well, the Civil Rights Movement was full of leaders, and that was in the 50s, and yeah. that was 40 years ago. It was full of leaders. But it wasn't Malcolm the time X that was we have leader. today. Martin Luther King was a leader. Ruby Doris Robinson was a leader. These people are responsible for the Voting Rights Act. Right. They are responsible for the Civil Rights Act. They but don't I have like colored drinking fountains anymore. I like today's leaders, though. They, they manipulate brainwash and control the black people for their own personal needs. I do agree that Jesse Jackson, Maxine Waters, who people you have named, are not good leaders. Yeah. They're attached to a political program that is one of sellout. They defended the signing of the welfare yeah. bill. Oh, well, we didn't need that anyway. Well, we disagree, we obviously. Did. From what you yeah, said, I would imagine it. that you would disagree with that on the welfare bill. But um, mm -hmm. Radical women, do they hate men? No. They don't. No, we're, we're a socialist feminist organization that is made up exclusively of women for the, because it is important to prioritize training women. We work with men all the time. Men come to our meetings. We, I mean, uh, they support us. We support them. It, it's based on what you stand for politically. Okay. Do you believe there's a right and a wrong? Right or wrong? In or most cases, yes. In, it, I believe that there's a right way, there's a right decision and a wrong decision, and then there's, yeah, I do. do the do. short answer is yes. Um, I, I've noticed that uh, in, in society today, uh, men are weak, and and uh, and I ask this of a lot of people all across mm -hmm. the country. So I appreciate the opportunity to having to ask you. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that men are weak in society. They seem to be afraid of women. They seem to be afraid to stand up to their wives and their family and, and, and not give in to her anger and insecurity. The kids are angry because the fathers are weak. Uh, how can we turn that around? Well, <laughs> if, there are some men in this, if there are some men in this country afraid of women, they probably have reason to be and they should straighten up their act. But I mean, I, don't, I, I disagree with your formulation. I, I think if men, Men need the same things women do, only women need it a little more than men do. We and need equality. That? We need a, a social system that isn't based on dividing us and making us fight with each other instead of cooperating and building something reasonable. Men are socialized in this country to go it alone, 
to not show their feelings, to compete rather than cooperate. And this isn't a very productive way to live because we don't live in a world where you can never, I don't know that there ever has been a world where you could make it on your own and not, not rely on other people and not learn from other people. And the whole macho John Wayne ethos of that's a strong man is actually very destructive to men because they don't learn anything that will help them survive, like how to listen to other people, how to learn from other people, how to teach other people. And so men have a disadvantage in that, but I don't think that makes men weak. I've noticed that men who have gotten away from uh, uh, inner strength and they have believed women, when women say we should be more emotional, we need to listen and all that, those men who have become that way seem to be weak and pathetic, and the woman that encourages a man to become that way seem to hate him after he becomes that way. I don't even know any men like that, so I don't Let know what you're you talking this. about. I gotta ask you this question. Socialism. Uh -huh. I've noticed that socialism doesn't work. When you look at other countries, socialist countries, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Capitalism seems to work better. In America, ca capitalism is working, has worked, and will continue to work. Why would anybody in this country want to turn this country into a socialist society? Well, <laughs> socialism, I don't think it's fair to say that it doesn't work since it's never really been tried. We've, it, had, we've had the Soviet Union, which was a worker state, which never was able to achieve socialism because socialism is an international economic system just as is capitalism and it can't survive in one country. But in terms of now, and Cuba, which hasn't achieved true socialism either, has done a pretty good job of, uh, of providing for its people coming from the kind of backward, um, impoverished country that it was by nationalizing property and collectivizing production. Um, black men in, so in Cuba have a life expectancy of 77 years. That's, uh, what is it, 14 years longer than it is in the United States. Education is free through college in Cuba. Now here, where capitalism works so well, I can barely get my job done every day without tripping over people pushing grocery carts because they haven't got money or jobs or housing. If you think capitalism works so well, I suggest you talk to somebody who lives in the ha Haiti, the Philippines, Chiapas. You, you know, know, those countries are, are examples of how capitalism does not work. And I can here, tell you this, Marianne, for a fact. Mm -hmm. Those people that you're walking over on the streets uh, and you say they don't have jobs, 90% uh, of them are out there because they don't know how to deal with the issues of life. They don't know how to deal with the stresses of life. So they end up on drugs, you know, alcoholics. Uh, uh, they become bombs because they don't know how to deal with life. They've been weakened somewhere in life, in the family. Uh, they've gotten on welfare and now they don't have the uh, know how to, the strength to deal with life, so they end up becoming bombed. It's not because uh, capitalism doesn't work. And socialism seems to do that. It takes away the inner strength of a person and causes them to become dependent. But this is well, what I don't... Do people, that are, do people don't push grocery carts in Cuba. They're not sleeping on the streets in Cuba. But, this, but, I but mean, Cuba I... is a bad situation. Uh, I don't see anybody leaving America trying to get to Cuba. People try but to go I to Cuba all the time. It's illegal to go to Cuba. You I know see that? people you can go every day to... try to come here. So it's not working in Cuba either. I don't know that you haven't, you've talked to a lot of people who've been to Cuba, but the reason Cuba economically has trouble now is because the U.S. has blockaded that country for 30 years and they can't, trade, can't trade with the rest of the world. And, and actually, if you're so much a supporter of freedom and independence, then it seems to me you would think that the Cuban people have every right to choose their own form of government, their own form of economy, and that the U.S. government hasn't got the right to tell them how to operate and the millions and millions of people who live there now, um, from everything I have been able to learn, are almost in complete support of the, the way they run their system now. And so what is it that would make you support our governments stepping in and telling them how to run their country, except that our government example of how to run its own country is, doesn't shine so much next to an example of a country where there's no illiteracy, people eat, and people live to the age of 77. I like to understand people thinking, and so this question is uh, geared toward that. I've noticed that the last 40 years, there's an aspect of society that feel the need to take care of other people. You know, like 
you don't have to work, here's a welfare program. You don't have to study hard and earn your way, here's affirmative action. Uh, you know, we'll do for you. What happens to a person's mind that caused them to think that they can take care of someone else? And why do they think they can take care of themselves and other people, and those people that they are taking care of can't take care of themselves? What causes a person to think that way? Well, I don't know, um, because that's... You I know, that's I the idea of socialism, is the government taking care of you, you know, here's a program, you don't really have to do it. What made that person think that they are capable of taking care of someone else and they are not capable of taking care of themselves? Actually, the idea of... I don't know where you got that idea of socialism. Socialism is where working people own the means of production and we keep the profits. They're, that uh, right. Jay, I, I, J, Rockefeller doesn't keep the money. The resources get to be reinvested into the community so that when you work all your life for, uh, for making things or building things or doing something, the resources that come out of that make schools and roads and hospitals and provide education. So you don't think that... And that isn't because Big Brother, the government, has given it to you. It is because you, we, oh, we've okay. done all the work in the first place. So now, on your other question, I don't know. My mentality is that I need many... I grew up a female and grew up knowing that I could not have a whole bunch of the kinds of jobs that I might want, that less of me were going to go to college, that less of me were going to go to graduate school if they wanted to. And I think it's perfectly reasonable for people in that situation to organize and say, hey, you know what? You're going to open the door. You have no right to restrict us from this. You have every ob you've been making money off of our labor for years and years and years. We want some of it back. And I don't think that is a when will you want to help others, although I do support other people's struggles. It's not a social worker mentality. When will you know, when will women know that they, I mean, when will enough be enough for women? When will you know that, okay, you have the law, the law's on your side, go do your thing. At what point will they stop complaining and women and whining? And they will stop you? complaining. Yeah, women. Those women that are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's unimaginable. Um, it's hard to imagine this system ever providing me with the option of saying, hey, we've got it. Since oh, what I've been, since the last this. 25 years, all I've watched is things being taken away. Yeah. So I'm not going to hold my breath. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Mary. If women want to be tough and want to be like men, why not get two up? different things, you know this. <laughs> Why not get up and earn it instead of trying to force society to give it to them? Oh, I'm a woman. I deserve this. Give me that. If oh, they want to, if they want to be like men, become a real man, earns his way. He doesn't whimp and whine and beg, right? Mm -hmm. So why don't women get up and act like men if they want to be that, if they want I that? think women are some of the toughest people I know. Really? Uh, women are the t some, most of the tough people I know are women. Most of the people I know only tough who I would want with weak. me. They're only tough because men are weak. There's no. no such thing as a tough woman, but only weak men. So weak men make women look tough. I tell you, women are not tough. You know, you, 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 for somebody who wanted to know if we all hate men, yeah. you come across with actually a whole lot more attitude about men than I have. I mean, I, I have no problem with men. If I don't like them, I tell them. Yeah. But I don't find them weak. You know, some of my best friends are men, actually. I wanted to say that. Oh. Um, but most of the tough people I know, kind of people that if you're in an alley with a, in a knife fight, you want them on your side, are women. Okay, let me ask and you And that's because we've had to fight harder to get the same thing that, that men get automatically in this society. And it makes you tough to do that. I have two minutes left. You do have two minutes, all right. Do you, were you raised by your father and mother? Yes, I was. Did you have a good relationship with your dad? Yes. You did? Good. Mm -hmm. I love uh, my dad. When, if you should win, and, and you know, in this country there's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> How tactical. Mm -hmm. What would you want to do? What, would what you I would want to do? Yeah, what would be your purpose? One of the things that I think would be the most exciting thing to do would be to go to Sacramento and immediately confront the anti-gay, racist, anti-woman forces in the legislature. Oh my God. I wish we had another 30 minutes. I have yeah. no idea. <laughs> and. I, I am, because see, knowing that we would go in, oh, is this, are yeah, we out of time? I'm sorry, we're so out of time. <laughs> okay, we if can do this. Want, I know. 
<laughs> if you want more information about the LA Radical Women's Organization here in Los Angeles, call my 800 number mm -hmm. and we will give you the phone number. Okay. I, I really appreciate you coming on and, okay. and your honest, honesty and, mm -hmm. and uh, your willingness to talk about these issues. Okay, well, thank you for doing the show. All right. Thank Bye. you. Bye.